What's going on, guys? It's Speedums, and today I'm reacting to something that I have no idea about. <laughs> so, as you can see, I am already subscribed to who we're reacting to today. Penguin Z Zero, aka Moist Critical, aka Charlie. He's a really, really popular YouTuber. Been around forever. Really, really good stuff. I've recently gotten into a lot of his content again. Um, does a lot of tier list videos. I highly recommend just going through that playlist. It's great. But go give him a subscription. Uh, I also don't know anything about Cody Co. I've heard the name, but beyond that, I I don't know what we're getting into. But if it's from Charlie, it's probably a great video. So let's jump in. Cody Co is a YouTuber that probably doesn't need an introduction. I don't need to read the Wikipedia article explaining to you who he is and lore dumping. I'm sure most of you are at least loosely familiar with his content. He's been very large on the I'm platform not. for years now. And recently, some disturbing allegations have come out against him. Now, the oh. allegations against him aren't exactly brand new. They're not, you know, fresh off the battle bus, hot drop in here out of nowhere. They've actually existed for a little while now, but never actually received a lot of coverage or a lot of attention. Kind of just been sidelined with people not knowing about it or not talking about it. Until yesterday, when another YouTuber named D'Angelo Wallace gave some amazing coverage, breaking down the entire situation here and going over everything that Cody Ko is accused of. Someone has been alleging for years now that you, one of the largest commentary creators on YouTube, knowingly committed a crime against her when she was a minor. But YouTubers oh. and viewers alike are ignoring and discrediting these allegations solely because the person making them happens to be an unlikable woman online tana mojo yikes yeah that's some pretty awful shit right there that's a huge allegation that actually has a lot of evidence backing it up which d'angelo wallace covers in great detail in this video okay. it's not some imaginary nothing burger that someone squeaked out between their butt cheeks to try and ruin cody co it's a serious accusation that appears to have a lot of evidence about it that's what's great about moist critical is the way he describes things is just it's beautiful it's so hard to even like fathom how he comes up with some of these things but they're great i'm not here to accuse you of committing a crime in this video because i can't do that based on someone else's allegations nobody can definitively take these allegations as proof but at the same time they should still be looked at and not treated as an open secret and swept under the rug like that's you've been very doing fair for so many years now i think that's a great point even though these are it still is. allegations with nothing that's been proven since there is so much supporting evidence around the claims, it definitely is something that needs to be examined thoroughly because it is a huge deal. And speaking of this podcast, about a month ago, she hosted a live episode in front of an audience and the conversation turned to you. Who's the smallest you've ever had sex with? Oh my God, did no one look at me, Cody Ko. I can say that. I was literally 17, I can say that. This clip started making the rounds and people were understandably perturbed because if Tana Mojo was 17, wow. you would have been 25. So people started speculating and Tana decided to set the record straight. I hooked up with Cody Cole when I was 17 and he was 25. I'm going to go ahead and break down these numbers here because it seems like people are starting to struggle with math, like teriology starting to pop off with one times one equaling two and all that. I'm just going to go ahead and explain this. 17 is less than 18. Thus, that is below the age of consent and is a crime. Depends on where you are, actually. Um, let's see. How many states have age of consent at 18? The answer is 12 states. Arizona, California, Delaware, Florida, Ohio, Kentucky, North Dakota, Oregon, Tennessee, Utah, Virginia, Wisconsin. Now, am I saying it's not creepy as hell? Yeah. Like, if you're 25, find someone your own age. Like, it's not that difficult. Um, honestly, like, I don't even think somebody who's 25 should be dating someone who's in college. Unless they're, you know, they're, like, towards the end of college. Like, even dating, like, an 18-year-old, like, you've been through more than they have. You're in a different place than they are. They're much easier to get taken advantage of. Um, I'm not saying it can't happen and, and, you know, be fine. It's just, it's a little weird. If they're still in high school and you're 25, just don't. Like, even if it's technically legal, don't do it. It's just strange. 
And I already have seen comments on this situation about 17, who gives a fuck? That's basically 18 anyway. And it's the same dog shit, brain dead, concerning mentality, like your hard drive needs to be investigated type shit that we saw with Dr. Disrespect, where they're like, no one should really care that Dr. Disrespect was talking inappropriately with a 17 year old. Even though, once again, you absolute fucking Cro-Magnon, there is no evidence that Dr. Disrespect ever talked to a 17-year-old. Not even he said that. It has only ever been stated as a minor. Everyone around Dr. True. Disrespect never mentioned 17. It's actual delusional fantasy land Narnia type shit where people are trying to defend him by saying it was actually a 17-year-old, 364 days old. Which is absolute fucking barnacles. Like that so, that's the problem with Age of Consent is that what makes somebody more mature at 17 and 364 versus 18? Um, I know there's some places that have, like, age gap laws, where until I think you're 21, um, you can only be, like, within five years of someone if they're, like, between 16 and 21 or something like that. So, like, let's say you're, six, you're 17, you could only be with someone who was 22 or younger. Um, I feel like that's at least a little better because... I don't know. It's a really touchy subject. It's really hard to find like a perfect balance. Um, but I feel like adding that in as well as an age of consent would at least limit some of this stuff a little more. That's a load of fish paste. And even still, it's bad. I don't know how we've... Div and on that... The subject i'm 32 i don't even think i could date someone who was 25 like it would they would have to be an extremely mature person for 25 because where i was at 25 versus where i am at 32 i'm a totally different person like going back to 25 i i, I don't even recognize myself and then going back to when i'm like 18 totally different person from that so like it, it's not even a matter of how young the person is to me it's more about the difference in maturity levels and i don't know well again i'm not saying like someone who's 40 can't be in a good relationship with someone who's like 25 like it definitely happens i'm just saying like it, it's weird for me to think about being with someone who's 25 let alone being 25 being with someone who's 17 that that's just Involved so much where all of a sudden 17 is now something people try and justify so like in this case right here you'll have some drooling stinky bumbling morons in the comments saying how it's not a big deal because 17 shouldn't be an issue you know like age of consent over in this region is actually 16 so really he waited till she was old like it's craziness it's actually craziness it yeah. is a crime it is a minor still it's bad like, I don't know why that needs to be explained all of a sudden. Now, something D'Angelo Wallace does make a point of here is pointing out that Tana Mojo is not well-liked. I am sure if you've been on YouTube for any length of time, you've heard what her that name and seen anything? a lot of less than stellar things about her. She has a history of lying and putting on a lot of bad stuff oh, okay. and bad behavior. And she has a history of lying? However, when it comes to this claim, this doesn't appear to be something that she's just lying about for clout to try and elevate her platform on the back of Cody Ko's good name or anything like that. This is a story that's been told even a few years in the past about this situation here. So this isn't something that she just pulled out of thin air. This is actually an allegation that has existed for a long time that is only just now starting to surface. She claims that not only were you fully aware of her age at the time, but someone even tried to stop you and you went ahead anyway. There was a situation with Gabby Hanna at a playlist live where she pulled him aside and told him like, yo, she's 17. And then we still went and hooked up. To be clear, 17 is under the age of consent in many states, including Florida, where playlist live used to take place. So okay, so if it happened in a state where it is, uh, below the age of consent. Yeah, that is a crime. I, I take it back. I, I see. That's the thing. I should. I, I was gonna actually just say like, right before this part happened, I should probably find out where some of this stuff happened. But then I was like, yeah, maybe they'll explain it. Right there, Florida. And like I said, there's only 12 states where the age of consent is 18, and Florida is one of them. So yes, it is a crime. So this means that Tana Mojo is accusing you of statutory rape, and she's yep. not trying to hide that. This isn't just some crazy tea. 
it was a crime. Remember how Tana said that fellow YouTuber Gabby Hanna tried to stop you before everything allegedly went down? Well, did you know that Gabby is actually on record telling the exact same story several years ago? One time, I told a guy, I saw him making out with a girl at a party yeah. who was underage, and I pulled him aside and I was like, hey man, you probably don't know, I know she like looks a little older, she's underage, watch it. And he's like, oh my god, thank you for telling me. And then he turned that- This is really- I remember seeing really the clip. Bad. Really, really bad indeed. Pardon my potty mouth here, but this is fucking disgusting. Like, this is by far the most compelling piece of evidence presented because this is a completely separate third-party individual coming forward now with the same story years ago. Exactly how Tana described it. Fine now, let me check real quick because Co when did Cody Co start? Uh, oh, he's 33 now. Uh... Oh, he started on Vine. So wait, if... If he was 25 then, and now he's 33, that would have happened eight years ago? Um, 2012 to 26 all right so yeah he was still an online influencer so my point being is that not only is he 25 and she's 16 which even if like let, let's just put aside the fact that they're in florida and the age of consent in florida is 18 not 17 or 16 like most other states in the united states let, let's throw that aside He's an influencer who is at a party hooking up with someone in high school at 25 years old. Even if that wasn't illegal, how is that not disgusting? Um, Finding this clip was huge. I don't even know how it was unearthed. Huge props for, for finding this ancient artifact. Because apparently it had been scrubbed from like everywhere. I, like I don't, I don't even know how you would have even go, gone about finding something like this. But I really think it is an important piece to this story. It's a very strong piece of evidence. And it should hopefully showcase that this isn't just something Tana is making up on the spot for attention or anything like that. This is something that has been talked about for years. There's a lot of comments that get shown in the video with people shitting on Tana for bringing this up. Like, oh, this is this is prehistoric. Why would you ever bring this up now? You just want attention, you absolute harpy. Oh, who, who? Or she's older now, she's more mature, and she realizes that this isn't something to just let it go. Who cares? This is bullshit. It's all a lie anyway. All you do is lie. You liar, liar, plants for hire. You, you harlot. The, 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 oh, the Spongebob like, reference. I love it. People about this. And I really think that this Gabby Hanna clip that's been provided should shut that garbage down. Of course, it doesn't prove 100%, you know, the authenticity of everything. As D'Angelo Wallace also explains, these are still allegations. But that is a pretty substantial piece of evidence there that should at least show why this needs to be talked about and should absolutely be addressed directly by Cody. People make accusations all the time, specifically regarding things that are very difficult to prove or disprove, unfortunate as that may be. But when somebody makes an allegation and they say they have a witness, and that witness can be found telling the exact same story years before any of this came out, that's not something I can just ignore. In a situation that cannot be proven, Should corroboration be. by a third party goes a long way. I'm not accusing you of committing a crime, but even if what Tana says is false, your silence is still grossly incompetent at best. It really is a pretty bad strategy here. This isn't something John Madden would draw up in the playbook. Burying his head in the sand and hoping that the storm blows through doesn't exactly work in a situation like this. I mean, I guess it... I guess it has up till this point since so few people were aware of it, 
But now that it's being talked about more and more, yeah. I do think that he's going to need to come forward about all of it. There yeah, see, quite... that's the thing. Like, You can stay quiet when people don't know about something, but once they know about it, you have to say something. Otherwise, you're basically admitting that you're just a piece of shit. But there's no other way to put it. Like, you can admit, hey, I was 25, I did something really stupid, I'm 33 now, I'm a totally different person, you know, at least own up to it. People will respect you a lot more. Yeah, you're going to lose followers, but people are going to respect you a lot more than if you just stay silent or you just try to deny it. Uh, there, there's no point in that. A bit of time in the video dedicated to the community's response to the allegations because it is bad how like viewers have responded to all of this basically and it is a good point that the angela wallace made because tana mojo is widely disliked by the broader youtube audience when she was the one putting these claims out there people attacked her like dogpiled her well, of course for saying things like this like they they jumped on her like she had just you know, killed a puppy in front of them. Like people Look what happened to Johnny to Depp in the worst possible way with these allegations. And Tana made a really good point where she said if this was any other YouTuber she was talking about, one that wasn't as highly regarded as Cody, the response would be completely different where she'd be getting sympathetic messages and support for coming forward with her experience. But because it's Cody, it's been a biblical smackdown in the comments against her. Which is just like a crazy response to something like this. I mean, there were some lunatics there. Like, like genuinely hateful people saying like the most misogynistic shit you could find in the comment section about this because she dared come forward with her experience and uh, talk about that situation. Now again, yes, they are allegations. Nothing has been proven. But there is a lot of evidence here that should at the very least get a response from Cody Ko about all of this. It's not even a lot of evidence. It's literally one piece of evidence. It's the fact that, um, who was it, Gabby? What I I have memory issues, so forgive me. Whoever it was that was at that par party, she talked about it two years before it came out, and the it was like a hidden away clip that like hasn't really been looked at much since then and then somebody else comes out with an allegation that matches up with her story exactly that's pretty pretty compelling honestly you don't need a lot of evidence if you have that <laughs> and it's not like he's not aware of what's happening might not hold As up in a court of law video, but he is seemingly censoring his youtube comment section and now you're choosing censorship on your wow. YouTube channel, where you've been pumping out content nearly every day now, I couldn't find a single comment on your last video about this situation. Not even one. Comparing that to the comment section on your Instagram, where every single comment I saw was about this, it's clear that you're heavily censoring your audience on YouTube. I actually want That's to something I would never do. Like, I, I don't get the point of it. It, it. All it does is make you look even worse this myself because this is a this is a lego build that you can follow along with at home i went to his latest upload and clicked newest in the comment section because surely you'd see some now after this is being blown up into a huge story but even when filtering on his newest upload by newest comments i still only found a couple of comments that referenced this so it really does seem like it's being heavily censored in the YouTube comments. Because with how big the story is, you would expect a lot of them. Especially when you look at his Instagram. But somehow, nothing on YouTube? Yeah, that's very suspicious. That definitely, that definitely smells like he is censoring the comments there. So oh, it's 100%. not like he doesn't know what's going on here. Uh, Tana also said that he had reached out at some point kind of about this. Saying like, are we good? So it's, it's, it's not something that he's just unaware of, and that's why he hasn't addressed it. D'Angelo Wallace also points out how he's responded to things in the past, like he paywalled an apology for like an old Wait, clip that surfaced what? where he was using a, a slur. So he's talking about like the, the history of responding poorly to situations that, that Cody finds himself in. And then he brought up this, which I'd never heard of. 
Not many people know that you've already lost fans over an eerily similar topic. You used to frequently feature and promote your college friend Colby Leachman in your videos until it came out that during your school days, Leachman's university put him on probation for, as a United States district judge would later put it, the non-consensual videotaping of a sex act with another student, showing the video to other people, lying to the police about the video, and behaving horribly to that individual and at least one other woman. Oh. To make matters worse, the woman in the video also alleged that Leachman drugged her before the recording and that she hadn't actually consented to anything at all. You had this man in your videos. You were telling us to follow him on Instagram, and at some point you did wise up, so he's no longer part of your content, but he he still seems like he's very much a part of your friend group. From the continued hangout since then to inviting him to your wedding just last year, people are under the impression that you're best friends with someone who, at best, committed an illegal sex act and at worst is an alleged rapist. And no matter how many times people rediscover this information over the years, you refuse to say anything at all. That... That's horrible. Yeah, that, that says all you need to know about someone. If they're going to continue being friends with someone like that, like, and the fact that it was more than one person, he drugged them, like, there's a lot there. What pisses me off the most is that there's so many good people out there that should be getting recognition and don't. And then there's assholes like this that have millions of followers, and people love them, is baffling to me like it's one thing to be friends with someone who turns out to be a monster but once you learn that they're oh, a monster, everyone's done that. that's where it should stop i've said this before so I, I have a quick story here i was friends with someone who i became really good friends with his girlfriend as well i was going through a really bad period she was going through a really bad period they had broken up he told me that I should go out with her. Okay. So he was fine with it. Like he he thought we he even said when they were dating that we should have been dating because we were more alike than them two. So like he was fine with it. So we started dating. Then he tells me after you know, after we've had this conversation, that he was going to do whatever he wanted with her, whether either one of me or her liked it or not. And the moment those words came out of his mouth, we were never friends again. So, yeah, you you, you have to surround yourself with good people, uh, especially, especially when you're an influencer. Or if my best friend Matt turned out to have like... A, a secret double life, you know, a Jekyll and Hyde situation where Matt goes out there and he does something truly heinous. I would cut them out of my life. I wouldn't be able to go forward being friends with someone like that. You know, giving him a fist bump saying, hey, we're still bubble buddies, bro. Like, I couldn't do that. So it's so weird to me that Cody can, and when people have talked about it in the past, apparently Cody has just ignored it. That, that's that is the worst. very, very odd. Now, if somebody does one bad thing and you say, look, I get they did a bad thing. I believe in second chances. That's understandable. But when you just stay quiet, when you try to hide the fact that it happened, all that stuff, that, that shows a lot about your character. I haven't seen a single channel over a million subscribers do so much as acknowledge that this situation exists. And I'm not talking about channels that never would have discussed something like this either. I mean the same channels that were rightfully calling out people like Dr. Disrespect for texting a minor, which are the same channels that are now completely ignoring a scenario with an even bigger creator being accused of doing something much worse. The Angela Wallace makes a point a couple times in this video about the silence on this subject being staggering, considering in the YouTube ecosystem there's tons of commentary channels that'll cover a wide variety of topics, sometimes rumors, that aren't nearly this serious, you know, like a two-part docuseries on that time Markiplier allegedly pooped without peeing. Or, in my case, Wait, I'll make a whole <laughs> rant going over how aliens probably aren't visiting us via theoretical warp drives to haunt our boners. And yet, somehow, a I'd story that that's video. this serious just slips through the cracks and didn't have many people talking about it until, until very recently. So I'd like to at least take a quick moment here to explain why I hadn't covered it. 
Now, I did hear the whispers about this Cody Ko allegation about a week ago now, where someone in stream chat had mentioned, hey, have you heard what Cody Ko apparently did with Tana Mojo? And on stream, I asked what they were talking about because I hadn't heard shit about that. Eventually, another chatter explained that I could find more information about it on Reddit because a conversation was starting to develop around those allegations. So I made... But the thing with that, too, is you can't... Especially when you're a channel as big as his, like, he's got 15.5 million subscribers. He he can't listen to everything that people say. Because if he just made a video off of something that somebody said in a comment and then it turned out to be wrong, now he's liable. So I understand why he hasn't talked about it yet. He made, like, a note of it and then went to bed. The following day, I got home pretty late and then went to follow up on things from the previous night. Because sometimes during stream, I'll make like tabs about what people are telling me to look up. I don't do react content on stream or anything anymore. So if it's like a video that people are recommending oh, I didn't to check know. out to get caught up on something or whatever, I'll make a tab for that video and then watch it when I get back to the following day. And when it came to the Cody Co thing with the Reddit post, by the time I got to it, it was deleted. So I kind of assumed that maybe the claims were just baloney. And I didn't see a whole lot of chatter about it. I saw a couple of tweets that loosely talked around it. Vaguely, I haven't heard about it at all. And so. I just didn't look into it deeper than that. I'm and not as I tapped in. I recognize now that that was a mistake, so I'm sorry for that. But I just didn't find a lot of information at the time. Until, of course, last night when D'Angelo Wallace posted the video covering all of this. So I know the speculation has been made that the reason people aren't talking about the Cody Co situation is because he's a, a channel that a lot of people respect and is friends with a lot of the community. So no one wants to speak out against their friend or a channel that they respect so much, thus they're trying to help, you know, bury it or not let it, you know, erupt into the mainstream. Well, the other thing too is it's not just that they don't want to talk against their friend. They don't want to remind people that they're associated with it, a lot of them. Uh, they're kind of doing the same thing that Cody Co did with his friend, only they're probably just going to distance themselves. So, which I I don't think that's the right approach. I I think you should be talking about. It. For me, that wasn't the case. When I went looking for the info after that stream, I didn't find anything, and I didn't do a big enough dive on it to access it. So I just kind of stopped looking, which again was a mistake, clearly. I've talked about Cody Ko's content in the past. I've liked his content. I respected him as a content creator, but I'd never say that we were friends or anything. I went on his podcast one time, and I think we only ever talked in Twitter DMs once as well. We weren't exactly like inseparable friends, you know, the best of pals and buddies or anything. Like I imagine if we walked by each other in a crowded mall, we'd do one of these each other and that'd probably be the end of it this isn't some kind of story that i was avoiding or anything like that i just truly didn't do enough digging on it because as d'angelo wallace does mention this story has been pretty successfully buried for the most part where a lot of people just weren't aware of it and i didn't do due diligence to become aware of it but luckily i wasn't aware wallace of it either so did don't, and don't blame yourself great video going over all of it so I wanted to talk about this because obviously it's a very serious situation. Cody Ko absolutely should come forward to explain all of it. And if there is another side to this story, tell it. If it's wrong, set the record straight. It's a very upsetting story here that at the very least needs to be addressed by Cody publicly. Yep. This like can't I, be another like said, paywalled whoa. apology oh, it's situation or anything like that. This should definitely be something that he comes forward and actually talks about. So, yeah, that's really about it. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, like I said, even if he acknowledges that it happened and owns up to it, that is so much better than ignoring it happened, deleting comments. Like, all you're doing is showing that you haven't changed, you haven't grown as a person. So, at this point, an apology probably isn't going to do anything. Addressing it probably isn't going to really help him. Uh, the only thing that's going to happen is more and more people, now that the story's out, are going to be jumping on it. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that it, it's taken this long to get a response, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, that, that was a different kind of video. I don't normally react to these sorts of things, but I did today. If you enjoyed that video, throw me a subscription. 
throw Charlie a subscription. Link will be in the description below for this video if you want to go back and watch it or you just want to go over and follow. Uh, like I said, he does some great stuff with like his milk tier lists and things, so highly recommend it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Catch you on the next one.